Last up, we've got the Atlanta Falcons. Seven and a half wins is their current Vegas total. They needed cornerback, linebacker, and edge rusher. So, basically, they needed defensive help, and that's 100% true. They they got the weapons on offense. They got pieces. Um, McKinnon already jumped in on Facebook. Hard to believe there's a division in which Matt Ryan is the worst QB1 in the division. Definitely excited to see how the season goes for the division as a whole. Um, look, it, I, I think it's between Matt Ryan and, and Teddy. You know, at, like, Teddy's I, not I, proven yet. Let's be yeah. real careful before you give it up to Teddy. Now, I kind of hope he is the worst because I'm not a fan. But. Hey, yeah, you're you're not a fan of the Falcons. I like the Falcons though. I I don't have a problem with the Falcons. Um, now I, I will gladly make fun of them just the way that I will everybody else. But that's okay. Incredibly boring football team. I see. I think they're exciting, but I, I think it's no, exciting no, in a different kind of way. Exciting about them because I I, I think they can beat anybody, and I think they can get housed by anybody. And that's that's what makes them exciting. But um, all their games are boring. All their games are terrible. And they were last year for sure. Uh, Every Falcon game you watch is just a snooze fest. Matt Ryan is a very good quarterback. Matt Ryan is really boring. Yeah, Matty Ice uh, hadn't really lived up to the name a whole lot, uh, other than the uh, the Super Bowl season. But I mean, he had massive yards last year. And just you know, defense was awful. Uh, Tim said, "Can they bring Cam back into uh, backup Teddy?" Uh, no, Carolina will not be bringing Cam Newton back. Uh, McKinnon, outside of Davidson, I'm not super happy with the Falcons draft. He's a damn stud. Uh, Terrell was a bad pick that I'm hoping I'm just dead wrong on. They're touting him like the next coming of corners, but I don't drink that much Kool-Aid. Uh, Michael said Atlanta got pass rush help after struggling the last couple of years, and they took a pick for Chris. Yeah, they did. They did. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, Carlos Gomez jumps in on YouTube. Good to see you, Carlos. I had A.J. Terrell as a reach for the Falcons. I had Jalen Johnson. Gladney and Trevon Diggs is better prospects, 100%. 100%. Yeah, um, and, and I'm also the guy that says, why the hell are all these cornerbacks going so early? There was elite-level safety there, elite-level linebacker play there. And, and there were better just, cornerbacks. And better, cor- and better players at the position you took, and I'm just leery of that position. So. Let's let's roll through what they took. Uh, round one, they uh, they had six total picks. Round one, A.J. Terrell, cornerback out of Clemson. Round two, defensive lineman Marlon Davidson, who we both love out of Auburn. Uh, round three, center Matt Hennessy out of Temple, who is a beast, even if you hadn't watched him a whole lot. We, you and I yep. both watched a lot of Temple games last year. Uh, that that guy can change the game, or at least he did for uh, for the Owls. Last the last year. two, three years, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Round four, linebacker Mikel Walker uh, out of Fresno State. Round four, safety Jalen Hawkins out of Cal. Round seven, punter Sterling Hoffreiter out of Syracuse. And that is what Michael was talking about. Taking a punter with a pick. What are you doing? Whatever. Um, it, look, first round, A.J. Terrell, cornerback out of Clemson. There were better cornerbacks, we feel like, that were on the board. Now, we can be absolutely wrong, and we have no problem admitting when we are wrong. If A.J. Terrell comes in and lights up the league, then that's fine. But at 16, that was a bit of a reach, and there is absolutely zero way that he was higher on their horizontal board than C.D. Lamb was, who went in the next pick. And I understand you already got wide receivers. You already got your offense is set. But as far as value goes, if you are a smart franchise, You take the best player in that position. CeeDee Lamb was a top 10 pick that fell to 17. You had the 16th pick. You had the option to go get him. Imagine an offense where you've got Calvin Ridley. Or go ahead. trade that pick to somebody who's willing to give you a fortune for CeeDee Lamb. Because you can get A.J. Terrell later. (laughs) Yep. I don't understand it. Either way. Round two, they got Marlon Davidson, defensive lineman out of Auburn. We we were both big on those two guys at Auburn. Uh, yeah, no, the, the, those two yeah. boys are going to be massive NFL stars. And, they and the just fact, are. The fact that you get Davidson at forty seven, I mean that I'll give him. I'll give him that. Here's here's I, I I don't know why he fell. I thought it was. I love Brown. Brown is the elite of the two of them, but I don't know that he's that much better than Davidson. Uh, day two, this is what PFF said about Marlon Davidson. He said, Davidson falls closer to the tweener side of the spectrum or defensive lineman than the versatile side. His flexibility is impressive for a bigger dude, but he doesn't have the burst to threaten NFL tackles. Bulking up and kicking inside looks like his best bet. He is no, largely... he's probably going to play inside, but I that kind of I kind of assume that all along. He's a largely uh, 
or he is largely a projection considering he didn't play a ton of reps along the interior at Auburn. That is just Oh, God, crap. I don't care about all that. Well, he didn't play that in college. He so said, but he now has, will he do good at it? You know what he's really good at? Taking the guy in front of him, pushing him on the ground, and making a tackle. Uh, he, they said uh, he has all the tools to offer a high-end production at the position in the NFL. Uh, Michael said 100% right, Chris. Safety, if elite, can cover and play the run. They can play three positions. I think Simmons uh, had a quote about that prior to the draft, 100%. Uh, McKinnon, who replied to Tim, Tim said Atlanta always gets one solid pick. The rest are usually awful. McKinnon said, amen to that. Been a Falcons fan since 04. Nothing but rarely enjoy the draft. Um, let's let's talk about that third-round pick as well right quick. Hennessy, uh, the center out of Temple, who we just talked about, can play on the move. That's a coveted skill at the center position today. We worry about his high-cut, slight build, holding up at center against power. He ranked fourth among centers and 103rd among all players on PFF's big board yeah, I mean, it, you, you might have reached a little bit, but look, that was a position of need, and it, I, I think he's going to play. I, I like Hennessy. He, I understand yeah. when you talk about measurables and all that kind of crap. I, I get it. But I also look at the players playing football, and if they are good football players, I trust that they will be able to translate, for the most part, to the NFL. It, it, maybe I'm wrong on that. Do you feel the same way? No, I look, I look at, so for offensive linemen, if you're not going to be one of the elite guys and you're looking at second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth round guys, what I care about is how many snaps did you play in college? How many years were you a starter in college? Because if you're a three-year starter in college, i got to assume that I can figure out something for you to do in the NFL. Yeah. And I, I, I just do because you're good enough to, to take the beating, take the coaching, and keep your starting job for – Long periods of time. I just got to figure it out. Now, I'm very skeptical of guys that are smaller schools, don't compete with a lot of other people, come in, have one really good season, and don't have all the size measurables. Those are all the red flags. Now, I don't I don't give yeah. a shit. I ain't touching that kid. Yeah, I understand. I, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. Uh, rounds four through seven, they got two fourth rounders and one seventh rounder. We're, we're not going to touch on the punter. At, the kid at Syracuse, had a lot of chances to punt this year. We'll just say that. So obviously he can uh, he can look good on a on a highlight reel. Uh, but in the fourth round, they took linebacker Mikal Walker out of Fresno State, and they took safety Jalen Hawkins out of Cal. Obviously, big fans of Cal's defense. What Justin Wilcox did there was ridiculous, uh, and the safeties that he had were able to play. They were good. They're good players. If you can get that kid at at one thirty four, one hundred percent. And then uh, Mikal Walker out of Fresno State. Yeah, Tedford did not win with offense the last two seasons. Their defense at Fresno State was borderline ridiculous. Like, I I could not... It, if there was one thing that you would have told me about Jeff Tedford coming back to college football, that would be it. It's it, 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 just the most ridiculous thing you could possibly say is Jeff Tedford is going to win with defense for two straight years. That's it. Like, I... I I don't know what else to tell you. Jeff Tedford's defense was unbelievable. Um, I just, you know, McKinnon said, I almost never get to enjoy one of my college guys play for one of my two pro teams. I think they just killed the Davidson pick. I know I already said it, but damn, I'm excited for him to rise up. Yeah, if you're an Atlanta Falcons fan, be excited about Davidson. Be excited about Hennessy, even. Um, you know, A.J. Terrell, hope for the best. Just hope for the best. Like, I, we think he reached. But, I, I, I mean, who's to say? Like, I, 16 just seemed way too early. And and we weren't the only ones that believed that. Um, oh, no, yeah, there's a lot of people that thought that. And I just, I yeah. just you know, oh, that was just too crazy. much. I'm, I'm just leery. I'm leery of some of those Clemson defensive kids because they played virtual high school teams for 80% of their college career, maybe 90% yeah. of their college career. Now, they look great against Tua and that Alabama offense in, in 2018, but against Joe Burrow and that bunch. But they wasn't even just Joe Burrow. Ohio State cut them up first half of the game. Yeah, I mean they they couldn't they didn't score touchdowns on them, but they moved you know. the football though. They had a ton of yards. Uh, yeah, they had a ton of yards, but they didn't score. I mean Ohio State only had twenty three points for the entire game. I mean that's that's on them. You know, like they, we can go rehash that again if we need to. But it, look, at Ohio State cost themselves the ball game. Um, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about AJ Terrell being able to stop a receiver. No, nah, he he really wasn't able to. And when he went up against good receivers, he didn't stop them. Yeah, he looked great against you know the crap coming out of Florida State. Miami's 
garbage offense. Sure. Yeah. Uh, by the Look way, like stars. Go ahead and give applause. Restream. Let us know. We uh, we received a hundred messages today on the restream chat. Thank you guys, obviously, for always jumping in here. Fantastic stuff, as always. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm I'm going to say that I like the Falcons draft. Now, it's not my favorite draft, but I, I like what they did. Other than that first round pick, um, you I, know, I didn't like it because I didn't love anything other than the second round pick. I, I think you know the fourth round picks with the kid out of Fresno State and Cal. I I like those. Obviously, you know, you were going defense with a lot of this. You, you drafted a cornerback, you drafted a defensive lineman, you drafted a linebacker, you drafted safety, and, and you hope for the best, right? And these are all kids that, that I believe can end up being good NFL players. I, I like it. I don't love it, but I like it. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Um, with that said, who do you think ended up winning this draft out of this division? I think the Bucks did. I think you're probably right. Yeah. I think, I think they got the best. Right. Oh, never mind. They didn't have the best player. I think Brown was the best player in the draft. I think they got the most um, high-end talent. I do, too. I do, too. I think the players they took are going to to just – they're. I, I think they took less flyers. I think they took guys that are going to produce and are going to be productive NFL players. Yeah. And I think some of these guys we're going to see get cut in the next year or two. Uh, Michael jumped in. He said, just want to say thanks, fellas. You give us the platform to chat and have these conversations. I definitely enjoy it and appreciate it. McKinnon said, I'm glad one of us liked it as a Falcons fan. So, yeah, I'm with you. I understand where you're coming from. I I don't think it was, like, I'll say this. I don't think it was terrible. Like, it's. Well, no. At at some point in time, somebody's got to be the loser. If all all four teams did good, then I I did the worst. So. So who do you think won the draft? I think think the Bucs won the draft. You know think, what? They didn't lose the draft. They didn't lose. The Saints lost the draft. I, I think the Saints, yeah, I Saints think the Saints lost. lost. Saints 100% lost the draft. They took four picks. They gave up a lot of picks to get a pick that we don't know anything about. I don't know anything about. And, and, and the first and they, two picks and were. And they took a wasted pick completely just to piss somebody else off. That's stupid. Yeah. I, I, petty I, bullshit never wins. I don't, you know, I, I, I like. The, I like some of the players that the I, – I, how about this? Instead of liking, I understand what the Saints were trying to do in this draft, aside from that seventh-round pick. Their their first three picks in the draft was Zach Vaughn and, uh, and, and Cesar Ruiz and Adam Troutman. I, I understand where they were going. I don't necessarily like it. I, I think they lost this NFC South draft, um, and I think the Bucs won it. Like I, I think the Bucs are set up better long-term. I think they got players that are going to be around longer. So, yep. you know, and then and then the Falcons and the Panthers, I mean, they're right there in the middle. We'll just see what happens. So, who knows? I would say the Panthers did better next after the Bucks, but I yeah, they got the single best player out of the draft. If I had to rank them, I would I would go Bucks, Panthers, Falcons and then Saints. That's the way I do. Yeah, I'm 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 okay with that. I'm okay with that. So, I'm good with it. All right, we'll is there anything on. else that we need to hit on today? Nope, that's it. Let's get out of here. That is it. All right, guys, this was a longer one than uh, than usual. Again, we appreciate all of you jumping in on the chat. This has been fantastic. You guys are wonderful. Share the show out with your buddies. Tell your friends about it. Leave a nice comment and a nice review on the podcast. Make sure you are subscribed. As always, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And we will see you again tomorrow. Thanks for